In 1919, he hit 29 home runs and was sold to the New York Yankees. A three-run home run for Buckington. The Yankees now lead it by a score of three to two. Bill Lee is now going over to a couple of the Yankees, and there they go again. Tech and A-Rod going at it. Roberts is going. The shot is throw. Roberts, safe. And what can I say? Just dip my heart and, and call the Yankees my daddy. Welcome to Fanbase, a deep dive into the greatest rivalry in sports. John Senecal, Brian Shackman here for episode 113. Coming off an interesting weekend for both teams. And, and you know, listen, we're leading up to, I don't know, it's basically like a month from now when they start to play each other. And I think we should start with the Yankees because... You know, they came into the weekend a last place team. Every team in the division is still over 500. They had a four game set with Tampa, arguably the best team in baseball. And before we get to the week ahead, what's your takeaway from that 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 split? Well, it's interesting because um, we were we were going to record last week, right? Yep. And then like construction in the studio, out yeah, of they nowhere. were drilling through the ceiling. Yeah, so we postponed it. But I was coming in here last week. With the doomsday scenario, like I was, I was all fired up. I was like, "This team's awful. They're gonna get swept by the Rays. They're just gonna." What, typical rid- John Senecal well, cynicism. Yeah, typical Yankee fan though. With the, the way the season's been going, right? But coming off of the of the series with Tampa, other than the first first game of the series, which was a clunker, um, great positivity in my opinion. Now, granted. The pitching wasn't as great as I as we would want it to be, right? But the run scoring is what I'm looking at. The run scoring, the, the Volpe home runs, the Judge home runs, the key defense, um, the being down and coming back. I mean, the second game of that series was the best game of the season by the Yankees by far. Yeah, I got um, your text. And so, yeah, if yeah. you would have, and if the Yankees would have finished it off on Sunday, um, uh, Mother's Day, um, obviously coming off. So, uh, a win of the series would have been great, but to split with them and basically be in the same position you were going in, but not last place. The Red Sox are back, are in last place again. Um, positive, in my opinion. And you have been going the whole season. You got seven games against the Rays, and you've only lost one of them by more than one run. Right. So, uh, produ- it, producer Matt Royce, who produces the show and uh, my morning show on WTIC, said it was the maybe the most exciting weekend of baseball all all season. It just in terms of the back and forth, yeah. the runs, the com- the the competing of yeah. it. it. It was one of those. It was one of those series where um, when I was watching it, even when there was stuff going on in the house, like we all sat down and watched it. We were we were glued, and like I was like when Judge almost knocked it out in the last game, I was like we're all sitting there like ah, you know, like on the edge of our seats. So yes, yeah, very entertaining series and very positive in my opinion for the Yankees, even though they split. I mean, it's even- interesting because they're you know going into this week's game. Games, they're both. I mean, I mean, the Yankees aren't. Tampa's five and five in their last ten, and they're still thirty-one and eleven starting the week's games. I mean, it's just kind of amazing that they played some. It's not even middling baseball. They just the the Yankees have played really well, and they're still that far ahead. I mean, they're still eight games up as of Monday. Yeah, it's crazy when you're. I was talking. I, I, I go to the grocery store in the morning a lot, and there's a Yankee fan in there, and he always it works there, and he's always talking to me about, you know, what's going on with the team and stuff. And I'm like, it's nuts that it's the middle of May, and you're literally glued to the wild card standings. Right, but that's, I mean, that's my point is that you, it really feels like they're already playing for the wild card, and and, and like fighting for the wild card because all and if you look at the schedules ahead, going way out, yep. you're gonna be fighting the whole season, and you have. The four teams at the top of the wild card standings as of Monday are all AL East. I mean, they're even ahead of the Astros, uh, the Red Sox by just a touch, but they're still ahead of them. It's funny. <laughs> I look. I looked at the standings the other day, and I was just kind of looking through like teams, you know. And I looked at the Astros, and you always take a little bit of satisfaction when the Astros aren't playing good. Oh yeah, it's it's great. It, and as a Yankee fan, you take a little bit extra. But I feel like baseball fans in general, you know, except for the three hundred thousand. Astros fans that are out there like it when the Astros aren't playing. And I don't know when that's going to end. I don't think it ever will. I Because I, I agree with that wholeheartedly, and I embrace them as sort of like the evil empire of the 21st century kind of deal. So, I mean, it'd be nice if things could hold up. I mean, the Rangers spend a ton of money – and the the Seattle Mariners are an incredibly likable team. And the Rangers just got bad news on DeGrom. He's going to be out a little bit longer. And we all know that's just smoke. He ain't. Come on. Let's 
You think he's done? Let's get with the program here. Like, well, that's that's his playbook. You that's mean. his playbook, right? That's his playbook. He's on the Stanton plan. <laughs> it's just how it works with him. And if you if you didn't know that going in, well, you're they crazy. did. They, just, they all they, knew that going it, in. It's a risk reward. And we'll, we'll I want to shelve the Oakland A's for a little bit later because I want to talk about the Red Sox because they got swept by the Cardinals and and Cassis. Did he get his jersey? I don't. I don't even know. I don't even care. Like that guy's. I think he's trying to be weird. Was I, that just because the mic was on and they were just fighting for something? Like, hey, ask him for his jersey. I don't know. Like, explain to people what what happened. So apparently, Arenado's on first base, and Tristan Cassis asked him to swap jerseys. Yeah, we'll and he and and uh, Arenado said, "Well, you can take this one because it doesn't have any hits in it, anyways." And then I guess in his next at bat, he hits a home run over the monster. And then they're, you know, the announcers are all joking that he's not going to get the jersey. Not getting the jersey. That's funny that Costas was asking for it at the first base. It I just love... seems like an unfair trade to me at this point. Yeah, but I don't I think the yeah. runner up to the ML MVP and, and Tristan perennial. Casas. Yeah, and Tristan Casas. He's not perennial anything yet, but I mean. Well, he's, he's a perennial all star. Who is? Uh, no, no, I'm all, talking about Casas, right. though. Oh, no, no. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Very lopsided trade there. But what you have is you had, you know, Kenley Jansen gets his 400 save. And, and and it was really nice. The Red Sox did a really nice for a guy who's new to the team. They did a really nice job the honor, honoring him. Four hundred saves in the book. I know, and a guy who came up as a catcher, who's and, played for a lot of good teams. It shows you, and who's yes, and who's from Curacao, and there's a lot of pride that small, yep. tiny island from Andrew Jones, and you know, on up, and you can sort of see from Curacao, the shores of Curacao, you can see, I think Aruba, where of course uh, Xander Bogarts, I believe, is from. Yep, and so. But then it always happens after something like that that you, you come off this high and and he had two horrible outings. I mean they they blew that lead on Saturday three one going to the ninth, and then Ryan Brazier who was a, a part of one of the meltdowns and didn't pitch well on Sunday night. I'm now, really shocked that guy's still on the team. He I got, really well, am. he got DFA'd. He finally did. Yes. Okay. So but the point is is that you now have your star closer who just got four hundred. Saves who you would think now is going to be at someday, believe it or not, even though I never would put him in this category, he's going to be a, a Hall of Fame conversation guy. Has you know, everyone goes through patches, but to give away two wins like that against a team that has had a tough start, those are the games in May that cost you in September. Yep. And so, I, I think that, and Brazier, I mean, I, I, I mean, listen, you don't pitch well, you got to be accountable for it. But, um, so if they have that kind of trouble at the back end, I mean, Chris Hale went eight innings. Pitched a gem, and 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 doesn't get a decision, Jackson and they don't win the game. Too, didn't he? Yeah, well, he had a lot of strikeouts, but yeah, up and it was the first time on the mound. First a long time on time. the mound, exactly. So there's some things that are are encouraging out of the starting pitching, but if you can't have a better uh, back end, you, you're going to really struggle. And so if you can't close out games against a team at St. Louis, which this time, listen, they'll probably rebound, but they've been losing a lot of games. I mean, it's not like they have a ton of fight in them. And I think it's tough. Forget about the fact that the so- Sox have overachieved. I mean, giving away games is infuriating for fans. And when your closer throws up on himself two days in a row, yeah. it's really, really hard. So I don't know how they're going to respond because the the Red Sox, they have a couple with Seattle before they do that West Coast trip, and they they got you know they got the Angels who are playing better, and Arizona, what is are they if not the top of the West, they're second in the West, and they're a big surprise team. And of course, the Dodgers, like no one's talking about the Dodgers. All of a sudden, you look up and they got like a five, four or five game lead in the West. It's yeah, like, but they don't they don't get the Dodgers this time. They get the Padres, the Angels, and the D backs. So I mean, we'll we'll see what happens. That's going to be really fun. Always fun with San Diego for some reason because you know Don Orsillo announces for them. Some reason the the Padres are kind of a deal in our. So they house. must they must have them at home, right? Or are they going on the road? Because with the Dodgers, no, San Diego and Seattle. Yeah, no, they're doing the West Coast trip. Okay, because the Yankees are playing in Seattle at the end of May too, so they're coming in right behind them. It must be. Yeah, it looks like that. And then obviously at the beginning of June, June's got six games between the Red Sox. And the Yankees, where we'll figure some sort some stuff out. But so anyway, they don't, they don't play till the middle of June. Now, wasn't it last year too? They didn't play till like almost Fourth of July or something right. like that. And they're playing a couple fewer this year, right? It's not yeah, thirteen anymore. only thirteen as, yeah. as opposed to nineteen, so, which could bode well for the Yankees and Red Sox. It might give them a chance to make up some ground if they don't have to get sawed up by the Rays. It's going to be it, and, if oh, this if this is the dynamic in September. It's going to be a crap ton of fun because if you have – September, I was thinking of what's it going to be like at the trading deadline. Yeah, or whatever. Are, yeah. I mean, you know the Red Sox are going to be looking for pitching. The Yankees are going to be looking for pitching and a bat if Stanton's still sucking his thumb. Right. So, it, But it's a different conversation, John, because crazy. the Red Sox conversation is going to be, well, are they? this is not the year they were planning to be good, so why would they trade – 
the, the same thing happened if before. Hanging around. Why trade if you're not going to go for it? And so if they don't make deals, people are going to be super pissed yep. because it's them staying with this plan. And the Yankees, you know, they'll mortgage anything to, to go for it. So we're going to have that dynamic again. The problem this time is, is if the standings stay the same, you have Toronto where their windows actually, it's not closing, but like, yeah. They ha- at some point it's got to happen for them, so they'll be desperate at the deadline if they're and they're not going to be, be a first. Friends. And then the Orioles are going to have to make the same decision the Red Sox are. They're like, to what degree are we going to compromise a little bit of the future to and go for it have now? The most to give, but they, they also they, their timeline is is Longer. this year is not the year for them, right? And I don't even think John Means is back from Tommy John, and he's a good pitcher. But I, I would think that Baltimore – what I've learned about sports, and this is what I would say, is that you never know what the future holds. So if you're close – Go for you, it. You have to go for it. Yeah. And I'd be super disappointed if any of those teams don't – and so if all four buy in, it's going to be awesome. It is going to be awesome. So, I mean, I, in some ways I'm fine with Tampa running away with it as long as these teams – because. In the years past, we just talked about it. If you don't have the 19 intra division, you can have all all five teams above 500. Yeah, it can definitely happen. It's he, gonna be nuts. It's gonna be fun. He's John Senecal, and I still think the Red Sox are gonna come back down to earth in a bigger way. But we'll see what happens. I'm Brian Shackman. This is episode 113 of Fan Base, a deep dive into the greatest, greatest rivalry in sports. You came in, and the, one of the first things you said to me is, you know, this Oakland A's thing. Um, you know, the fact that Again, as of the start of this week, they're still not in double digits for wins. Unreal. We're like in the middle of May, May and they haven't won 10 games yet. It's their their run differentials minus 157. It's the worst. Yeah, it's in, it's insane. I, I I can't believe it. Can you imagine like Are they going to have another season in Oakland before Vegas? Well, they would have to. I mean, they don't they have a build, stadium. Yeah, they got to build it. I mean, there's a AAA park in Vegas, but there's also a AAA team in Vegas. Which yeah. I don't know what's going to happen there. So the point is, I think they have another season in Oakland. And then someone said to me, well, uh, they have great fans in Oakland. Well, that, I mean, I know the stadium's <laughs> terrible, but you can't say that anymore. You no, really can't. No, Like, who wants to go watch that? Who no, wants but- to spend money to literally know you're going to go there and most likely see crappy baseball and a loss? Did you see how John Boy had it? There are so few fans. What, the, one guy caught two home run balls. Really? Yeah. Over the weekend, unreal. That's just classic. I mean, they're, they're they're probably it's probably so bad there, and that's a big stadium that you could the players can probably hear literally every single word. Oh, that's you could have an impact. Stands. Yeah, I got a story um, from that stadium when I was thirteen. I can't really tell it for radio because nobody really knows about it, even my dad. But when I was there, I was thirteen. It was like a life changing thing for me. I gotta work on whether I should tell it at a later date because it was like a a welcome to manhood. Thing for me, was it I, like was it in Philly? The lady was grinding that dude in the seats. Yeah, that was. Was it Philly or yeah. was it? Yeah, it was Philly, yeah. right? Yeah, she was doing a little lap dance. Yeah, <laughs> in the thing. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, let's, stay classy, Philly. I think that was the headline. I, but we did want to touch on before we go about that this proposed stadium in Orlando, and which looks and sounds awesome, right? It, beautiful. If, if anyone's seen the pictures, it's basically like a glass glass domed. Complex. It's not just right. a stadium. It's like a complex, and it'll be grass of, too, right? Yeah, inside yeah. of a glass dome, and um, it looks like uh, this guy Pat Williams, who brought the Orlando Magic to Orlando area. Now, is, is it a spec it. build, or he'll build it only if they get a team? Only if they get the funding and a team, and you know, there's, there's, there's uh, all without getting totally into it. They want to build like a forty-five thousand seat uh, stadium in lure of, of expansion team, or the Rays, most likely the Rays, who are looking to get a new stadium. And just move them up the road a little further, which makes total sense, right? Um, I think it'd be great for the Rays. I think forty-five k is too big. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean I especially maybe, for Florida baseball. Maybe they're looking for some other, you know. But Orlando makes more sense in Vegas. It's it's like Vegas in the sense that it has a built-in like fandom that that won't be like it. It it has people. It has tourists, right? So right. if you build a beautiful park. Non-local fans of baseball will just want to go to the park. It's supposed to be right, basically near SeaWorld, so it's going to be in the general vicinity of everything. It's supposed to be on the end of a rail line, and, or you know, everything is supposedly planned out. But it's a matter of pushing it through, and I think everyone's a little bit leery of the the, the bad deal that the taxpayers got on the Miami uh, Marlins. But apparently, this has got no taxpayer. The reason why I, I I think that because I'm anti Florida Major League Baseball in general. And the reason why Orlando is a better sell, not only because of the tourism angle 
of it because there are so many hundreds of thousands of tourists that go to Orlando because of the parks. But it doesn't have like a minor league or a, or a spring training. It doesn't have a spring it's training really culture. There. No, because spring training's not there. I think so, the Braves were there and they left. I think. They well, were they were at the Disney. ABC, yeah, the yeah. ABC complex or whatever. But I don't think they're there anymore. But I have to check. But I don't think they have a big, you know, spring training element, which would make it even more appealing. So people should look online at the stadium specs because it, it is cool. It says here that they're a uh, one point seven billion dollar project uh, calls for seven hundred million in private funds and nearly a billion dollars in public financing. Now that would be the rub, right? The million dollar billion billion dollars in public yeah. financing. Now this is how it says it's going to be paid: finance through the tourist development tax. Tax, a resort tax on tourists that brings millions of dollars for tourism development. Now that tax is already in place throughout Cal- throughout Florida, which I'm sure brings zillions of dollars. In, so they like just would said. divert some so of it. So they're going to move that and be creative with it, and I'm sure it will raise up a little bit. So if no, I was an Orlando taxpayer or whatever, I think I would say yes. I mean, I, I think it's – and you should look at the renderings. They're very, very cool, and I don't think Major League Baseball should be in Tampa. I don't think it should be in Miami either, but you can't do anything now because they built the stupid stadium. Yeah, so they're not going anywhere. I, I just think that the, you know, if you can watch the same guy you know, two months ago for 15 bucks, why would you spend 50 It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. All right, it just, it just doesn't. I mean, <laughs> just it, go to the fly, it'd be cheaper to fly up here and go to a Yard Goats game. Yeah. And you see better baseball probably. The yard goats, I mean, and the kids up here are so smart. One of my son's friends, and you know this too, you've done it. They 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 get cards of these minor leaguers, and they go get them signed at the yard goats, yep. and then like the Volpe card. Yep. This guy got a Volpe on card autograph, you know, and he's got it now, and he's he's in the bigs. I yep. mean, like it's crazy how smart these kids are. I do think the trading card business, we can use another episode on this, is a great business lesson stuff for our kids. Yeah. Boy, it fluctuates like you wouldn't believe. And I'm, you know, my kids have just switched their. They do they do football. Your kids do do baseball. But, you know, they're like I'm like I'm telling you the market, the market's you know it's flimsy and and so they've changed their approach instead of doing like a lot of like five and ten dollar cards. They're sort of dumping all of those and having just better cards, yeah. like the higher end card that might 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 make it retain its value. Because yeah. I I feel like the whole market co- could collapse at any oh, time. Of course, you know. I mean, what is it built on? I mean, it's scarcity. Built, it's basically yeah. built on scarcity and people what they say. I mean, I don't know who makes up these prices, but yeah, it's, it's disgusting. I spend a lot of money on baseball yeah. cards, but it is what it is. Maybe we'll fun. do we'll do a whole we'll do an off season episode on that. He's John Senegal and Brian Shackman. You've been listening to episode one thirteen of Fanbase, a deep dive into the greatest rivalry in